All right, awesome. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, so for this week, I got a request to do uh, weird deaths of history, uh, peculiar deaths. Uh, so uh, this is going to be kind of a machine gun style of just people that uh, uh, weird ways that they died. Uh, so first up on the list uh, is a guy named Aeschylus. Uh, it was a uh, uh, fifth century BCE, I want to say, Athens, Athenian. Uh, really well known as like a, one of Athens' great dramatists. Uh, he wrote like 90 plays. Uh, he was personally more proud of uh, his martial prowess. He fought in the Battle of Marathon and like, uh, I believe he actually came up with the, his own epitaph for his grave before, uh, or, or was, was was heavily involved in like how he wanted to be remembered. Uh, so like they they actually credit some of his epitaph to him, which is a little weird considering how he died. He did not die in battle, did not die uh, doing anything uh, uh, in the theater despite ha having uh, pissed off rather a lot of people in the city. Uh, and you think that would that would be kill him, but no. Uh, the way that he died, you'll notice he's a bald man, apparently an eagle thought that uh, he was a rock and dropped a turtle on his head. <laughs> And he died from a, a, a eagle dropping a turtle on his head. Uh, Pliny in the, the naturalist historia said that he'd been uh, staying outdoors to avoid a prophecy that he'd be killed by a falling object, but uh, gods don't care about that. Uh, it's probably like a, a little bit of a, you know, after the, the fact thinking that Pliny was like, said that, but uh, yeah, uh, first dude in history uh, that we know of to be killed by a falling turtle. Um, Next up, this one's actually a myth. Uh, this is about Maui. Uh, yeah, that Maui in the uh, in um, uh, Moana, of Moana fame, the Polynesian god uh, shows up in a lot of stories. Sort of uh, uh, Thor would be if uh, he had a you know was was out in Polynesia. Uh, in in the legends, uh, there's this goddess. Uh, there's the goddess of uh, death. Uh, the hint, I'm, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. I've only seen it written as uh, Hine Nui Tepo. Uh, and he thought that he would, uh, Maui thought, hey, I'm going to defeat death. Uh, how, how can I do this? Uh, and so he comes up with this, this great idea. It's like, look, mm, if you're born by coming out of a vagina, then you can beat death by crawling back into one. So how, that's how I'm going to uh, get this going. So uh, he goes to her island, finds her asleep, and she's this massive island goddess. Uh, and he's got some spectators, depending on the version of the myth, it's either a bunch of birds or his brothers uh, coming along. And in either event, he says to his spectators, uh, here's my plan. I'm going to crawl in her vag and uh, thus become immortal, and it'll be great. And um, just don't laugh. I know this is going to look real silly, but don't laugh. And so he starts wiggling his way in, uh, he gets his head inside, and then the shoulders soldiers uh gets halfway in uh yes that is an honest to god carving of of what's going on there in uh hawaii and uh gets halfway in and then the uh one of the spectators laughed the goddess woke up and her obsidian fanged vagina cut maui in half uh which is how maui died and what i am lobbying for the uh the moana 2's plot to be um, ostensibly, according to some versions of this, uh, it was actually the first death in all of creation, uh, and that was how death entered the mortal realm, which, uh, you blew it, Maui, you blew it. Uh, next up, uh, we have Tycho Brahe, uh, he's a famous Danish astronomer, uh, he's an alchemist, uh, known for being very accurate, uh, with his work, uh, is, uh, known for a fair number of things, uh, one of which actually was, uh, uh losing his nose in a, a duel when he was 20. Uh, it was a sword duel over who was the, the better mathematician. It happened at another professor's engagement party. Uh, and he had this prosthetic nose that uh, they said was a silver, but they, they dug him up, and you're about to find out why uh, later and found out it was actually brass. He may have had like other ones. He had like special ones that he would have on special occasions. Maybe he had a silver one, but the one he was buried with at least was brass. Um, coincidentally, like dueling uh, mathematicians over who is the best mathematician is uh, something that I, I think that we could stand to have more of. I mean, I don't want anybody's nose to be cut off, but you know, like arm wrestling matches or something that's completely unrelated to your mathematical prowess. Anyways, uh, in 1601, uh, Tico Brahe, who's a, a very, uh, it should be noted, very well-mannered person who uh, always is up on the etiquette, uh, goes to a banquet in Prague uh, as a noble banquet. 
and refuses to leave the banquet to relieve himself because he figures that would be rude. He goes all night without relieving himself and dies from not going to the bathroom uh, because it would be a breach of etiquette. Uh, afterwards, a lot of people were like, what? He died of that? No, he was poisoned. And this actually was a myth that, that persisted up to present day where people were like, oh, it was like totally like mercury poisoning. And like, you know, one of these, like Kepler, I bet it was Kepler was behind it. it was they, they dug him up. No, no, dude just died of, of uh, probably like a enlarged prostate gland. It, it, it likely was not, not directly like, oh, he just held his pee for that long. He probably had other problems going on. But uh, yeah, that's how you famous... Uh, Danish, uh, Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe died. Uh, moving on uh, to 1923. Uh, right here is a man named uh, Frank Hayes. Uh, Frank Hayes in this picture, I believe is uh, 34, 35. He was 35 when he died. Uh, he died at uh, Belmont Park in New York uh, as a jockey. Uh, so this guy, Frank Hayes, was not a very good jockey. He was kind of a, a, a no-name guy. Uh, he uh, never won a race. Uh, and then in 1923, dude completely blindsides everybody by winning this race out of nowhere. Uh, he uh, was riding a, a horse named Sweet Kiss that was also just not a, a particularly well-regarded horse. Uh, I think it's 20 to 1 odds. Uh, but Frank Hayes had no victory speech because by the time that Frank Hayes reached the victory line, he was dead. Uh, he had a, a heart attack mid-race and won the race while dead, which I believe is the first possibly only time that's happened. Um, yeah, they ran up to sort of like congratulate him and he fell off the horse. Uh, he had... They, they started looking into like, what could possibly cause this? He's 35, he didn't really have any, he didn't, wasn't sick or anything. What, it, what they think had happened is that he'd probably taken barbiturates and whatnot to try and get his weight down. He was uh, like 142 uh, pounds like a, a week or two prior and we had to drop down to 130, like drop 12 pounds, 142 to 130. Uh, and that probably did not do real great by his body. Um, the the last uh, thing to, to pop out of this this story, uh, unfortunately, is that the uh, the the uh, the horse who was named Sweet Kiss uh, didn't race anymore after that and was nicknamed Sweet Kiss of Death, which is mean. I think that is mean. Anyway, moving moving along. Uh, this next one comes from um, uh, about 1000 BCE uh, is a story told to us by a dude named Polyanus, which I want to believe is Latin for many butts, but is not. Uh, it's about a uh, woman named uh, Chrysame, I think is the name. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Chrysame of Thessaly. Um, and the whole thing takes place uh, not in Thessaly, but uh, uh, nearby uh, in uh, what at the time was known as Ionia. This is a uh, Western Turkey, um, specifically a, a city called uh, Eurythrae, which is like, was like a big bustling town at the time. Uh, and so the Greeks are, are coming in and trying to conquer Eurythrae in, in, in Ionia. And the general, uh, who's a pretty you know, superstitious guy, he's like, okay, uh, I need to consult, like I need to get like a top of the line seer, like some sort of like, you know, someone who's really in touch with the gods to secure our victory here. Cause like, this is gonna be a hard fight. So he goes to this woman uh, named Chrysame, who uh, was from Thessaly, which is known as sort of like the witch central of, uh, of Greece. It's like all, all of the, uh, uh, ladies who really knew their way around herbs and poisons and whatnot, like that's that's what where it was happening, right? Uh, so gets this this woman Kusame, to to come out, and here's what she does: she gets the finest bull she can find, decks this bull out. This bull is pimped out, uh, decks out in in purple and gold thread, gilds its horns, hangs flowers on its neck. I mean, this is a good looking bull. bull. Uh, sets up to sacrifice this bull, and then the bull freaks out and just bolts and actually ends up running over to the enemy side, to the Ionians in, in this, this city, and uh, just barrels into the enemy camp. And the enemies just think this is hysterical, this is great, what, what amazing fortune, the gods have rejected uh, this, this uh, sacrifice, clearly fortune is on their side. So uh, the Ionians sacrifice this bull, 
and pray to their own gods, they're like, yes, this is going to be double victory. This is great. And then, as was often the case, they, they all feasted of this sacrifice because the gods really just wanted to smell it. Uh, and like they, uh, oh boy, we're about to hit the, the limit. I will, uh, I will hurry it up. Uh, gods just wanted to smell it. So they all ate it. And after they ate it, uh, they started acting a little funny, hopping around and seeing things and laughing a whole lot. Turns out what Krasami had done right before all this had gone down is that she had uh, basically loaded up the bowl with some hallucinogen and dosed the entirety of the city of Eurythrae, uh, basically like uh, weaponizing psilocybin uh, or mad cow disease or something. Uh, it is impossible to know, like, uh, lost the history. It's one of these, like, oh, magic witch power moments, but basically dosed this city. And, uh, yeah, then they rushed in and, and killed everybody. So, um, yeah, I, I will rush through the, the, these last two. They shouldn't go super long. Uh, this was one that I'm going, is from Irish myth that I'm going to mess up the, uh, the pronunciations because Irish names are hard. Uh, it's a Deb Forgail, uh, an Irish myth. She was a princess of, of Scandinavian princess who came to Ireland with a handmaiden. They were in the form of a pair of swans. They got shot down by this dude that she was there to marry named Cuchillan. Uh He sucked out the sling stone from her womb. And then I guess that was like a taboo and he spit it out and he couldn't marry her, but he married her off to this other guy named Luke Guide. And they, they lived happily for a while and whatever. Come some very bitter winter, uh, the men of Ulster make these huge pillars of snow that they're going to make into uh, snowmen, right? And so the women see these pillars of snow, like all the women of Ulster, and they're like, oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to prove who's sexiest lady, and we got a competition going on, and you know how we're going to prove who's sexiest here? We are going to get up on top of these snow pillars, and we're going to pee on them. And everybody knows a dude likes a lady with a strong bladder. So whoever is able to like get their pee down the farthest, that's the lady who's like hottest among all of us. And so all the ladies of Ulster like get in there and just start peeing on these, these pillars. And our, our, our lady, the Scandinavian princess, Deb Fergile, uh, her piss is the best and it reaches the ground and the other ladies lose their shit. So they just gouge out her eyes. They cut off her nose, her ears, her hair. And then her husband finds out about it and he dies of grief. And so the original dude who'd like shot her down and sucked the womb and whatever, Kuhillan, who's like the hero of this story, uh, he goes murder crazy on the murder ladies and um, demolishes the house they're in and kills 150 people. Irish myth is really strange. Uh, that's the end of that story. Ah! Uh, um, the last one uh, is a person that you've all heard of, Attila the Hun. You probably don't know how Attila the Hun died, because there's a lot of different stories of like, oh, he died, he was assassinated, this, that, or the other. No, Attila the Hun died of a nosebleed. Attila the Hun just had a, a wife, uh, he took his sixth wife or something, and like they blamed some of this on, on her, but uh, like maybe she strangled her, him with her hair. But no, he had a nosebleed, he was drunk, and he drowned in his own blood. It's not a great way to go. It's not a very like manly uh, way to go. This is not actually uncommon for like tremendously unmanly deaths to have like a, oh no, it was a lady that did it. I, I cover on, on one of my books and on the, the blog, uh, a woman named Masako Hojo that uh, only woman I'm aware of to be both nun and shogun at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, her husband, Yoritomo, was thrown from a horse, which is, uh, was not considered a particularly manly death. So uh, there were a lot of rumors of like, oh, he was assassinated. Oh, Masako's ghost did it from like hundreds of miles away because she was jealous or vengeance or whatever. Uh, no, he was thrown from a horse. And uh, Attila the Hun died of a nosebleed. Anyways, that's all I got for you this week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah, you close close up the recording. I guess unmute people, and that's sort of that.